Welcome back. I'm going to be talking about finishing and specifically saddle stitching or booklet making on a Konica machine. I have three of the, I think there's four options, and I have three of them here. Um, and I'm going to go over the pros and cons of each one and why I chose the ones that I got. So if you are in the market for booklet making on a Konica box, uh, this might enlighten you a little bit. So basically, from small to large, uh, the FS612 is your entry level booklet maker. I'll go over that more. Actually, I should, I'll print out specs so I actually give you the correct specs. But FS532 is the next size up, uh, and that's what's on both of these center machines. Uh, and then we have the SD5046. I'll double check that one too. Uh, but I will talk a little bit about the differences between them. And uh, yeah, let me look up the specs quick. Okay, back to the FS612. I looked up the specs and the max number of sheets to make a booklet was 20 sheets. So that's an 80 page booklet, what you can do on this machine. Now this machine uh, will make your booklet, but it will not do a trim. Uh, this also has the hole punch unit uh, and the post inserter, but you could have this machine configured without any of these options in it. Your paper is gonna come in, it's gonna gather here, it's gonna jog, The staples, I believe, yeah, are in these blue containers. It's gonna jog, stitch, and then it's gonna feed it down below and fold it. And then come out the bottom here. Now I wanna go over the, the order in which things get done on these are different, and that's a key feature. So this stitches, folds, and then comes out. So it's a booklet maker. A saddle stitcher will fold a signature, then stitch it, uh, and it sits on a saddle. That's why it's called saddle stitching. This is entry level again. I don't know if I said that before, but uh, is okay in you know low demand environments. And this will also slow down for uh, heavier stock and you can stitch fewer sheets if it's a heavier stock. So that 20 sheets is if it's like lightweight, 50 pound text or 60 pound text. So it can't do a really thick booklet. Print some cards here. So this finisher and the finisher over there are the same machine, but they're configured differently. If you open this up, you notice uh, there's a missing spot down here. That would be for the, the uh, booklet maker, which does not exist in this machine. Uh, it will staple like a corner staple or side staple. Uh, and also there is no post inserter on here, um, which you can see here, like that's, that's an availability, which is on the other machine. So this will not make booklets. But if we open up the finisher that's hooked up here to the 1070, you can see the booklet maker is here. So this part of the finisher will make your booklets. And then you have the, uh, the stapling on this one. And this also has the post inserter. Now here, just like the finisher over there, the sheets will gather here, get jogged, stapled, folded, and come out the bottom here. And it has a little bit of a different delivery here. Uh, and this finisher will stitch up to 25 sheets. So that's a 100 page booklet this machine will do. And this is built for a little higher production. Um, it's gonna 
It's going to last longer. It's going to handle uh, longer runs, heavier booklets, and it has a nicer delivery where it'll just deliver it out. And you can flip this up so it collects them, but if you're doing any type of volume, I just run it out into a box. It's a lot easier that way. If you have a print shop, I would probably recommend this one over this finisher over here. And I didn't know when I bought this one that you're limited. A big downside to this guy right here is your tray here will not stack 1319. Any 13 by 19 sheet needs to come out the top tray and you can only do it itty bitty stack. So you have to constantly unload it. We're on the FS 532. You can do a 13 by 19 to the top tray all day long and you can do a much larger stack before you need to offload that so uh, if money is tight yeah i mean you can do that one it'll probably save you a couple hundred bucks maybe a thousand bucks uh but if you're in it for the long haul i would totally recommend this finisher instead and this is just another visual of how this unit can be configured with the post inserter uh, then you have the finisher punch or saddle stitcher which is technically incorrect it's not a saddle stitcher it's a booklet maker but i digress so neither of the two finishers i just talked about will do a trim on the face edge um, but the sd506 will and that is the next size up here and this is a true saddle stitching unit and it's part of the reason i bought this one uh, because i knew it would trim i wanted that and it also will fold the pages before it stitches and i'll open this thing up so you can watch it run and see how it works uh, and it, it does rotate the pages it's a very it's an interesting contraption and hats off to the engineers at Konica for what they do because the uh the men and women there they know what they're doing by the way thanks josh for suggesting that i talk about that because it, it's a great point it, it, it's it's really neat this finisher here is just a stapler and a receding tray so this will not make booklets but it will do a corner staple or the two side staples uh, so i have the sd506 here and I'm going to bypass the sensors on here and run it while it's open. But the paper comes across, it comes down, then it comes around the front, and then it goes up inside here. And the sheets will come here, and then there's a there's two rollers here that pull them up just to crease them over, and you can kind of see that's where it then will shoot out and it sits on the saddle in here where it'll get the two stitches it'll come down do a face trim and then come back out now because of that it will allow you to saddle stitch up to 50 sheets that's a 200 page booklet with the face trim that is a thick booklet and it's kind of awkward if you get up that big uh, I never really uh, recommend anybody does a booklet that size if I have a customer that has a book with that many pages I'm going to encourage either a coil bound or a perfect bound book instead uh, it just it's just neater although well then there's pros and cons to that too the coil lays flat the perfect bound won't open quite as much so nonetheless this is uh, I guess second to the best as far as booklet making for Konica. See the paper goes in, it's diverted down, and then it's rotated around the side. This solenoid actually lifts up the wheels so it can pull the paper up. And 
and those get lifted up when the sheet comes across. And then it pulls it up. Now it's moving really fast right now because it's only an eight page booklet. But if that was a much bigger booklet, it would stack up multiple signatures and then stitch it and then take it down to trim and stack. I have the trimming turned off because it's currently not working right. So I just turn off the trim. Uh, it throws an error when it goes back into the trimming, but I don't need it for these small booklets. So I just run it like this. And the fourth option for making booklets in line on a Konica machine is the Watkiss Power Square. Uh, and that is like the best of the best. It's gonna do the biggest booklets, it's gonna do a face trim, and it does a squared edge, so it looks like a perfect bound book. I don't know much of anything about that. I uh, just know it's a big, solid machine, uh, and it's, it's a nice machine. Um, I don't know what it costs, I know it's the most expensive one. Most of the booklets I do are all offline. Uh, that's because I often split uh, certain parts of a booklet on different machines, black and white color, uh, and a lot of the time I need a full bleed, and that uh, can really only be done on here. So I still firmly believe in offline finishing. However, a lot of, a lot of booklets like you saw printing today uh, that are just black and white on white text, no bleed, that kind of stuff I'll do all day long on the uh, inline booklet maker. So hopefully uh, this was useful to people that are exploring different finishing options or just want to learn about uh, what Konica has to offer. There's pros and cons to all of them. Uh, you know, everybody, you're going to have to decide for yourself which is going to work for you. So thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.